I broke the golden chest principle in this game and it got me into trouble. Take a look at it, learn it, remember it, master it and never break it in your own games or you're gonna lose so much. What's up chess player and welcome to the Journey to Grand Master, the place where you can improve every single aspect of your chess game and today we are gonna play this 15 minute game. I'm gonna explain all of my decisions in the process. We have a very strong player, 2355, and I am, I'm dedicated to play a Collie system today. My opponent plays knight c6, which is kind of a weird move for me. Like so many players, especially so many uh, low rated players are playing it as black. I mean, I know that's a legitimate opponent. They sometimes play it, but pretty much everybody that does it don't know how to play it. And then they run into some kind of a very passive situation where they lack this pawn on c5. That is a huge drawback of this move knight to c6 before placing your pawn on c5 that you don't have enough space there. I'm just gonna play e3 and see what my opponent is gonna uh, do about it, whether he's gonna play bishop g4 or immediately or start with knight f6. That is one of the possible options. I'm gonna just play here knight b to d move because that's a very flexible move. I'm waiting for my opponent to decide what he's gonna do about this bishop, whether he's gonna go to f5 or g4. In that case, I would have bishop b5, just immediately creating problem for this guy on c7, which wouldn't be the problem if the pawn would be on c5. Then you have uh, rook to uh, c8, queen to c7, no problems at all, but with the pawn there, it's inconvenient. Or he plays e6, like he did here, and now bishop e5 is not that great for me, because he has this absolutely silly bishop on c8, which is uh, actually useless, but if I play bishop e5, then it comes into play, plays bishop d7, then a6, and he is ready to recapture it here. So in this case, I'm gonna just play bishop to d3, and continue my coily system setup, which is placing the bishop here, making castles, placing the second bishop over here, and then jumping with my knight all the way to e5. Maybe I should have started all of that with the move b3, because one of the essential things in the coily system is to stop black from playing d5, and that way, yeah, I'm not really doing that. I still have another option to play c4 after bishop d6, making e5 not that convenient to play, but yeah, I guess b3 and bishop b2 was a little bit more flexible. Let's see, first of all, whether our opponent is gonna play that. Yeah, he does. And I guess c4 is a reasonable option because if he takes, then I can take it with the knight, and then the knight is attacking the bishop as well as controlling the e5 square. If he doesn't take and plays e5, then I take there, and at least e4 is no longer a problem, and yeah, I still have knight c4 on my agenda. Let's go for it. Because ideally, I would like to uh, make sure that this, this pawn remains on e6, and then my opponent has no active opportunities. He can go forward, he can do anything, and step by step I can uh, make my plan true, like knight uh, bishop to b2, knight a5, f4, g4, and or everything that uh, I love the Coily system for. Amazing opening, I sincerely recommend you try it as well. Let's see what my opponent does here. Because I already asked some kind of a question, what do you do about this c4 pawn? Whether you allow me to take on d5 and then your knight comes there, maybe I have some e4 ideas. I understand, of course, it's all double-edged, you have knight b4 and so on, but you have to calculate that. And that is essential in chess, you have to ask your opponent a question. You have to make it more difficult for him to decide, because if I would have just made short castles here, then it's nothing difficult for black. He can just play e5, that's clear. But this time, well, he has to take some responsibility for his decision here. My opponent is actually going for castles and not, not risking playing e5, okay? How do I continue from here? I really want to make this a3 move at some point because those pieces coming to b4 are very annoying. For example, if he plays e5, I take, he takes here, I would be happy to play e4 and then the knight goes away and then I play d5. But the problem is this knight is coming to b4 attacking my bishop. Yeah, actually the knight can even come to f4 if I do that, so that's not even solving the problem completely. But at least if I play a3 now, or maybe I do castles with the same idea, and he plays e5, I take, he takes, I'm gonna have the move knight to c4 because right now he has bishop b4 check, that is very annoying. But if I do that, then I'm attacking the bishop. If he plays, yeah, he can still play 
No, wait, e4 is not possible. You can tape, but then I take it there. And then, yeah, I'm going to have a nice elevated pawn in the end of the day. That's also not that great. Even though I'm going to have a pair of bishops, but yeah, not, not ideal. I can never take here. At least I don't want to ever take here because that would solve all of my opponent's problems. And that is something you never want to do because the bishop is free to go. The rook will control here everything. Absolutely not my plan. So how do I do that? I may play c5. That is an interesting option because that requires this bishop to go back. Can I wait with that still? Like a3, if he plays e5, if I play c5 right now. If he plays e4, I take it there, takes it here, I take there, and at the end of the day, I should get this free pawn. If uh, a3, e5, I play c5, he plays e4, I take here, he takes there. Then I take there, he takes here, and it's not great. He takes the rook and then of the day with a check and promotes another queen. But if I just take it back, then I'm going to have a pair of bishops and the pawns are equal. That's fine for me. Because I want to, to start with a3 to be able to play c5 and then b4 immediately. And then my bishop is free to go here, whereas b5 is on my agenda too. I'm going to go for it. I mean, typically your, your plan is to play b3 and bishop b2, but if you can play b4 at, uh, at the same point, at the same time, that would be even better. The question is whether I'm going to have time for that. If he plays something like c5, then it's still a beneficial inclusion for me, because as I said, it's very useful to cover the b4 square. With every move that my opponent delays playing e5, it makes it's more difficult for him, at least I would say so. So ideally, I guess if he wanted to do that, he should have done it on the last move. And if he doesn't want to do that, I don't understand what on earth he's planning to do, because it does seem like the only active opportunity White has. Here you can do anything. Here, yeah, maybe if knight e4 and f5 would be possible simultaneously, that would be an interesting idea. But unfortunately, it's like never possible, because this bishop stays there extremely passive. That is why you desperately need, from my point of view, to play e5. Maybe there was a point of starting with the move c5, because now if he plays rook e8, then the bishop can go to f8. And if I would have started with c5, then the bishop must go to, uh, to e7, and then e5 is once again much more difficult to implement. Okay, he plays e5 immediately. In this case, I wanted to play um play c5 or i also have c takes d and knight knight e uh, knight c4 variation so the problem i somehow underestimated i knew about it but somehow i forget to calculate it that after uh c5 he can just go bishop e7 and then after takes he can go knight to uh d7 or knight g4 attacking both of those guys then i wanted to play b4 takes there, and then in the end of the day, I wanted to play bishop b2 and make my bishop here strong, as well as, yeah, those pawns are also strong. But yeah, he's attacking my bishop. I don't like that. I need to waste another tempo to go back, then this bishop is coming. So maybe I do go for takes, takes, and knight c4. He takes, I take, he takes. Yeah, my king is in the center. My king is really misplaced in the center. Yeah, I should have just castled. I should have just castled. Okay, then I guess I'm going for c5 and and see what I can do in all of those variations. Because I don't want to give my opponent to open up the position with my king being in the center of the board. That's not a strategy you would like to go for. Now he has a choice, because he can still play e4, and I don't see e4 being a good opportunity for him. I think bishop e7 is more promising. Then, yeah, I also have a choice between taking there. Maybe I take with the knight, by the way. Takes. Then if he plays knight g4, I even have knight f3. And then it's not that simple to take that pawn back. And otherwise I want to play h3 and push 
the knight all the way to h6. And if he plays knight d7, then I can play f4. And even though it has some risks, it also seems like an interesting possibility. Let's see what he's up to. Once again, it's always great to put some pressure on your opponent, to ask some questions, to make it more complicated for him to take his decisions. That is what I'm always uh, trying to achieve with my play. Let's see whether our opponent is going to be able to solve all of the issues. He is pretty strong, 2355 from United States of America. Let's see what he's up to here. Wow. That is the move I didn't even consider, but I don't like it. I can just take e4, I can just go back somewhere, let's say c2 or e2. It takes, I can just take, then the material is completely equal, but firstly I have a pair of bishops, and secondly I can support that pawn and still continue my plan. I guess I go to c2, because on e2 the bishop is... Yeah, it's a good defending piece. Maybe it makes sense too, because... If I go here, he takes, I take with the knight, which is actually my desirable move. Then, maybe not, maybe I take with the queen. Because I can still play b4 and support my pawn. Maybe he wants to play a5 there in the end of the day to stop b4 and then attack my, my pawn with the queen. The alternative is to play bishop e2, takes and yeah. Once again, either knight takes or bishop takes. I'm not sure what better. what's better. Because I have knight d4 idea once. The knight is on d4. It's a very good blockader here. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't be too optimistic. Because if I play for that attack, yes, if I achieve everything with those two bishops, it's going to be just a dream. But if I don't achieve that, and my opponent would be somehow the first one to create dangerous threats for me, then I might be in trouble here on the king side in terms of my king, and all of my pieces are far away to help. So I'm gonna just go for it. It's very important also for me to stop the move d4, because if I'm able to block it there, then I'm in good shape. If he is able to play d4, then it's great for him. And also I'm blocking the e-file with the bishop, I guess that is another important thing, which wouldn't be the case if I would have played bishop c2. So now I'm taken there, having in mind the move knight to d4, having in mind the move b4, bishop b2. So I really think it makes huge sense for my opponent to play a5 to stop me from doing that, because otherwise I'm so happy with my pawn structure, with my position in general. Personally, I just never get it when people are uh, exchanging the bishop for a knight voluntarily. I mean, he could have just played bishop e7 back. There's no problems at all. He is threatening to play e4, and if I take, he has a beautiful way to win one of the pawns back, and then has his initiative. Wait a second. Yeah, I, I'm not... I was thinking that I'm attacking the pawn here, but all of that is happening because he removed all of my pieces from here. I had a bunch of pieces here, so I would never be able to take there. Then black is just taking the pawn back and has a very promising position. But this way... I mean that's very weird. Why why would you do that? If not if not pushed. Now g4 is not possible. Bishop g4 doesn't make any sense. Yes, the good thing in general, thanks to this move e5, the bishop is now free to go. But black paid quite a huge price for it, and that's weird. I don't see this price being justified. Which proves that Kali system is a really very good opening. Just make sure that you always keep an eye on this e5 idea. If I could have started all over again, I would start with, bish uh, with b3 and bishop b2 instead. But still, I'm very satisfied with the outcome of the opening. Now I'm gonna try to do my best to demonstrate you how to take advantage of two bishops' uh, advantage. Because so many people are telling me, why do you always say two bishops are so great? The, knight are so, uh, the knights are so tricky, especially in rapid and bleeds. Yes, the knights are tricky, but bishops are still better. Let me try to prove it to you. Okay, b6. Yeah, I would be happy to play b2, b5 right now. Then the knight goes away, I play c6. Unfortunately, that is not possible. And if I play b4, my opponent just takes, and then, yeah, there is a weakness on c5. 
maybe it's not yeah it is bad because he can play queen e7 he can play knight e4 attacking that guys i guess i have to take i have bishop b5 but yeah just bishop b7 i have knight d4 as well but you can just take it well i can take with the queen actually and then if you take i take it here well, you still have you still have ninety four and c five. So I guess I don't achieve anything with that. Then I just should take and focus on my development. That saves me time. Well, he actually takes with a pawn. I somehow thought he wants to take with the c pawn, but then yeah, the d five pawn is isolated. This way, he wants to open up the rook, and which makes, by the way, b four much more difficult to achieve, and makes bishop a six possible, like changing the bishop there. Even getting away my two bishops' advantage. Maybe I can start with queen to c2. Just asking a question what do you do with this guy on, on c6? Which is basically the worst piece black has, but probably he just escapes and then prepares the move c5. So it's not bringing me anything. Okay, then I'm gonna just castle and focus on my development. Maybe I just do bishop d2, rook c1 bring all of my pieces and try to put pressure on my opponent. How on earth can I make b4 possible? Because I guess b4 is a good move for me. That would make c5 more difficult. Now if you play c5, then you have to leave with those... Um, what do you call it? Double, not double. Hanging pawns, exactly. You call it hanging pawns because, yeah, that is quite quite a difficult uh, pawn formation to deal with. And I'm gonna have a passer here, which is not that relevant in the middle game, but maybe I would use it as a way to deflect my opponent from what's really important. And of course, place my bishop on b2, which is going to be a monster, which is going to have absolutely no opponents along this diagonal. That is my main advantage. So back to the question, how do I make before possible? Maybe I do play queen c2, it goes somewhere, and then I play b4, stopping c5 and preparing bishop b2. Maybe I should have done it done it immediately. But if he plays something like bishop a6, then I may take it because the rook feels clumsy on a6, and then I play queen c2 and attack that guy. He might play b5, but that is very weird. One formation indeed, then c6, c7 is going to be weak forever. What about knight b4? Is knight b4 actually a problem for me? Because I still cannot take it once I play queen c2. Because if I play queen b3, yeah, then yeah, he can actually even play c5. Yeah, that is not what I want to achieve. Then I guess I want to, <laughs> to play queen b1. The knight is hanging indeed, it has to go back, and then I play b4 and achieve my goal. That is a tricky way to do it. My opponent takes his time to figure out what has changed here, what... I guess his main question is where to put the bishop. There are so many different ways. Bishop a6, maybe bishop f5 made sense to stop my queen c2 idea in the first place. Place bishop b7. Yeah, that's also an interesting way. Now I guess it's... Uh, Really, the time for me to go for queen c2. Is there a d4 somehow? I always have rook d1, right? And then it's int, and I have too many attackers for it. Yeah, then I want to do that. And of course, I want to play. Well, I, I still cannot play b4. That is the advantage of the move. Uh, bishop to b7. So basically, now queen c2 is not that dangerous. I don't like knight d4. I don't think why uh, black is prepared for that because now I have rook d1 and I improve my position, I bring new forces into the game whereas my opponent makes another move with the same piece that has already moved and d5 is now more vulnerable. He doesn't have tactical ideas to justify it or maybe he does exactly in the way I do. Mr. Journey to Grandmaster, I can play Queen e7, and now if you take, I have Knight b4, forking those guys, and attacking it with the Rook, uh, sorry, with the Bishop, and I cannot take because my Rook is hanging. That would be problematic. 
Rook e5 also doesn't work because yeah, you can take, you can take here, attack him there. So I cannot take. But maybe I have bishop b5. Yeah, I like everything except for knight a7. Or actually, knight e5 also an idea. Also, knight e5, I have takes, takes, and then bishop c6. What I want to prevent the move c5. Once he plays c5, then he has quite a good chance. And yes, I always want to play somehow, place my bishop on b2, that is my golden. Well, maybe I just do that. Maybe I just play b3. Okay, before is not possible, so what? But I still achieve my goal. If he plays knight e5, I can either just play bishop b2 immediately or take and play bishop b2 with a tempo. That's even better. Knight b4 is maybe a problem. Because if I play queen b1, suddenly there is knight to c3 fork, triple fork. So I have to play queen b2. And then the problem is. I want to place my bishop there, not the queen. On the other hand, he does waste a lot of time for that because it goes back then. Yeah, somehow I should be able to improve. Maybe I play b4 now. Yeah, that shouldn't be shouldn't be that bad for me if he plays knight b4 and then has to go either bad or to a6. <laughs> not bad, but back. Hopefully it's going to be bad for him. Yeah, maybe I see a point of the knight being on e4 that's quite an aggressive piece here, taking a lot of squares away from me. But I still feel that once I put my bishop there, that's going to be such a huge power that my opponent has absolutely no answer to. Yeah, somehow he's getting so so much initiative. That's that's really something. I actually don't mind going into the endgame, but Somehow I have created weaknesses for myself. Like the good thing about having a pair of bishops is that it's not going to disappear once we exchange the queens. It's still going to matter. Not in terms of creating some attack, but in terms of controlling more squares and yeah, being more powerful in the end game. Yeah, I guess I have to take. Because I have no squares. I can just play queen b2, but then I take it once again away. Maybe it makes sense, and then play b4, but the queen is even coming here, and I never want to take it. But he also doesn't really want to take it, because then my bishop is very strong, and also d5 pawn might finally be hanging at some point. So maybe I'm going to go for it. Yes, I can exchange, but that feels a little bit more complicated, and I want the position to be more complicated uh, so that I can outplay my opponent. Also, well, I still control this diagonal, not with a bishop, but with a, a queen. And b4 is an idea now, because knight b4, yes, if I take with my queen, then in the end of the day, wait. Yeah, that is something I completely forgot about. Yeah, how I missed that move entirely. It's not like a huge problem, but <laughs> it changes my, my beautiful bishop. Well, actually, my beautiful bishop is this one. We are going to have opposite colors bishops, and my bishop hopefully is going to be stronger than his. So maybe it's not that, uh, that bad. If I, if I play b4, he takes here on d1 and attacking my queen. If I take there, he takes here. I don't have anything to compensate the material. So I guess I have to play rook. Does it make any difference if I play rook d2 or rook? Rook d2 feels more logical to me, so I'm gonna go for it. It does feel a little bit weird, but if he doesn't take, then I can just escape. And my rook still protects the b4 square. And I still want to play b4. I suppose it's time for me to play a little bit faster. 
But once the position clarifies, it's going to be simpler. I do think that I'm still better after take stakes. My rook is coming to C file where actually I want my rook to be. And maybe I will forget about my idea placing the bishop on b2 because my, my queen is great there and place it instead on d2, then double the rooks along the c file and then place the bishop on c3 and still would be very huge here. Because they might have told you that opposite colors bishops is always a draw. That's just wrong. It's almost always a draw when it's an endgame. But if you still have the queens on the board, actually opposite colors bishops help you to create so much, uh, so many more threats because your opponent's bishop just cannot help you at all. It's like you have uh, one piece more in the attack if you don't use the light squares. So that is exactly my plan. Judging by the fact that my opponent is not making a move yet, I suppose he's considering some options besides taking on e2, which I can't really figure out. What what else can you play? You can't really attack anything. d4 is not... No, d4 is not a move. Because, well, whenever you take here, then the queen protects the pawn on d4, the square on d4. So if you don't take, then I'm going to immediately play bishop f1, then rook c2, and then b4. That doesn't feel like a good strategy. Like, probably I'm missing something uh, once again, but I don't see any, any way to continue except for taking the bishop. Yeah, I guess he realized it. So now I can still continue my plan. I can put the rook here, play b4. Yeah, that's why he goes back. And he, of course, wants to, to play c5 and then d4 and open up this guy. That would be huge for him. So let me put the rook here. I guess it's where it belongs. Then bishop d2, c1, put pressure here. If I am able to do that before he... What is he doing? Queen d4, preparing some kind of checkmate attack, but... I don't get it. Okay, let me continue. Like, d4 is not a move, right? Because it just... Ah, maybe now it's a move. Because if I take it, he takes it. Then, yeah, now I understand the idea. Then checkmate is coming. And if I take it with a pawn... Then it's okay, because he takes, I take it with the queen. No, and then the, the rook is hanging. Wow, it's actually tricky. But I also have rook c4 some point. So bishop d2, d4, rook c4. Maybe he has b5. And then what do I do? I can take, but that means I sacrifice an exchange. Yeah, queen e4 is a tricky move. I can, of course, just play knight d4. No, I cannot, because he takes. Then if I take with the queen, I lose the rook. If I take with the pawn, I lose uh, due to checkmate in one. That's annoying. If I just ignore d4, then I allow my opponent to open up that diagonal. Hmm. What do I do? Yeah, this maybe maybe I was too fast with that move. I also have less than one minute. That's not great. Okay, I guess I'm going to just go on with the development. Of course, I can just ignore that d4 move and play rook to c1. He takes, I can just take it. He's not really threatening anything, at least yet. And then rook c4 is coming. I'm 100% sure I'm not worse in this position. It's just, I don't want him to activate his bishop. I want this bishop to remain as passive as possible, and to achieve that, I should actually prevent the move d4, but it doesn't seem to be possible. The question is whether after d4 I play rook to c1 or rook to e1, because I like both. Here I put a lot of pressure on the knight and the opponent c7 behind that. Here I place my rook against the queen, and once he takes, then, yeah, I can actually even take with the rook. Then all of my pieces are pretty much active. The bishop comes here. Yeah, I guess when my rook was back on e2, I should have just played bishop d2 and bishop c3 immediately. Just leave the rook there. I wasted the tempo here, and in many variations, this rook is hanging, for example, in terms of taking on d4 at the right point with the queen. 
that was a mistake. Maybe I would have some ideas to attack. Yeah, I still don't know where to put the rook actually. Because rook c1 I also like. He takes here, I take there, then I'm gonna have rook c4. This queen has to still protect the, the knight that I can get here. Maybe create some threats there. He can, of course, also play uh, the move d3. Let's say he plays d4, I play rook e1, preparing for d takes e, but suddenly he plays d3. And then this rook is stupid. I play rook c4, he goes away. And I guess I have to bring it back. Then I thought that d3 might be a weakness, but it's very difficult for me to get to it because he always has this bishop to protect, obviously the rook. I'm not sure I want all of that. Maybe I just play rook c1 immediately. Take it there. I, I still have my bishop and both of my rooks are active. If he plays d3, then still both of my rooks are active. Once again, I don't understand why my opponent takes so much time because d4 seems to work. And if it does, you must play it because otherwise I'm going to play rook c1. Yeah, maybe you can play rook d8 and still d4 would be possible next move, but why would you wait? You have, wait a second, no, I have bishop c3 on my agenda and then d4 wouldn't be possible because, yeah, I could just take it with the pawn, let's say. Or maybe, maybe you still can do it. Bishop c3, okay, he goes for it immediately. So my idea was to play that. Let me save some time and make it immediately because I have already calculated my variations. Now the pawn on d4 is hanging. Yeah, but now he can play rook d8, exactly. Just thought about it and he immediately make, makes a move. Okay, I guess I need to make a loop for my king. Or maybe knight e5 is coming now. That actually might be dangerous. If I take... Maybe I play rook c4 now. You can still play knight e5. Yeah, somehow, probably I have underestimated it. Maybe it was better to play here to threaten that. Now I'm not threatening anything. And knight e5 is coming. Maybe I play knight g5. The queen comes somewhere and then it... Well, but if I take here, the knight comes. Or maybe I play knight g5 and then e4. That's interesting. Let me go for it because I have no time. Because with the move e4, I kind of block that diagonal and I really want to block it. The drawback is, of course, my queen is also blocked here, and somehow my entire strategy doesn't, doesn't work the way I want it to be. I just noticed that I'm actually attacking this guy on c6, so if the knight, if the queen goes just somewhere. Yeah, but he probably also attacks my knight, so I still have to play e4. But once I do that, then the knight on c6 is also hanging. And if the knight goes away, then the c7 pawn is hanging. But sooner or later, he's going to play h6 and kick my knight away from here, which is not so great. Queen g6, yeah. By the way, queen g6 also protects the pawn. Uh, sorry, the knight on c6. Can I actually take? I probably not. He has knighted to check. If I play e4, he plays h6. Go away, and then he just takes it there. Yeah, that's somehow somehow going into the wrong direction. Probably I must have played rookie one. Yes, I have developed all of my pieces, but it doesn't help me because I'm not in time with my threats. Okay, now maybe three the threat. Let me still go for it. I don't have time to calculate anything else. Now I'll take here. Because that guy is hanging. And I played queen c2 not to run into d3 with the tempo after knight d2 check. Unfortunately, it's a check. I have to spend more time. But I do have one for an exchange. 
Okay. Yeah, he has h6, and then that guy is hanging. Maybe I take him. Yeah, if I take, then that guy is hanging as well. I cannot take. And I have to play here. Maybe I should have played queen c2 in the first place. Because e4 pawn might be a huge problem now. Wait, do I have something like knight xf7? He takes. I take, he takes. I take here, yeah, but at the end of the day he has queen takes b3 and that spoils everything. That's not great. And I have only surges two seconds. Okay, h6, if I just go back, he takes here. Maybe that's not the end of the world before. At least I blocked this pawn for the time being. That one is a weakness. Maybe I go here. Yeah, but he also has queen takes, right? And then I have, I need my knight here to be able to stop that pawn. That h3 feels wrong. And knight f7, unfortunately, just doesn't work tactically. Yeah. Guess I have to take. Maybe here I can just take there or play bishop b4 first. He has d3. Uh, rook e8, I take there, d3, knight d2. Takes, takes, rook e2. No, that, that's wrong. So I have to take. At least I get here a pawn. Just one pawn. That's, that's too little for an exchange. And he has a very clear plan. How do I stop it? Maybe if he plays d3, I, I bring my king. Doesn't feel... That doesn't feel great by any means. Maybe it's better than nothing. He plays rook 2 Yeah, rook 2 is still bad for me. He, he just takes everything here. Okay, he gives me a free move. How do I use it? I guess I bring my king. I don't have anything else. The pawn is just too slow. Five, eight, a six. Maybe not too slow. Let's go for it. Because you need to create that counterplay. If you don't create counterplay, there is absolutely no chance. I had a choice between centralizing my king, but. I wasn't sure it actually helps. Maybe I should have done that because this three can do one at least. My king is there to help. Now it's not. And rook e2 is coming. And then rook d1 is a, like a7 and rook b8 was an idea for me. And that would be fast enough, but unfortunately rook d1 is just checkmate. Okay, let me play. Okay, rookie one is also a checkmate. Checkmate thread there. Yeah, then I absolutely have absolutely have no way to fight. Because after D2, yeah, I should have played King E2 there. We are going to take a look at the game review afterwards, so don't go away. It's going to be very instructive where I made those mistakes. Okay, he's not playing d2 for some reason. Okay, that's checkmates right in one, right? He plays rook a2, I still have rook b8. Mm. Yeah, actually, how do you deal with that? <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. If the king would be on g8, that would work. But now the pawn is just hanging and they have no way. Yeah, the pawn should be here on b5 to make it all possible. That was clever of my opponent.
yeah, I don't know. From the very beginning, it felt like I have everything under my control. And then I allowed my opponent too much of a counterplay, and then it all began to be set. Anyway, a good game to, to learn something new, to understand where I made mistakes. I guess at some point I was too passive. And how allowed that move d4? Rook c2, I guess, was a key moment. Doesn't want to give me give me that pawn on f7. Which is a very greedy thing. Why wouldn't you just go there? What is he doing? He he all he needs to do is to play here and grab that pawn. Because if he gives me one more tempo, then I'm going to play b5 and ready to play b6. Yeah. Finally, he makes the right thing to do. And then I have absolutely nothing. Stupid two. Okay, one checkmate. He's playing some very weird moves, but okay, that's good enough. Let me just resign. And let's go to the game review. Let's embarrass myself here. See what I did wrong here. Probably everything. 80%. Okay, not that bad. So it all started normally. Yeah, so back to here. Just important to remember to start here with a move B3. That way, I am not allowing him to play e5, and everything is perfect. I somehow automatically play bishop e d3. Never make your moves automatically. Always try to think what your opponent has for opportunities. Of course, the position is still completely normal, but it's just not the not the plan I wanted to make possible. Yeah, I did have here takes, and then I can just yeah, not what I wanted. It's a little bit better for white, but yeah. No, I didn't like it. And c5 apparently is just giving a little bit of initiative uh, to black if they play e4. I actually said it's a bad move for black. Because here I said I'm going to just get this pawn back and that would be an extra pawn for me. What's wrong with that? Ah, bishop f5. Yeah, exactly, you can just protect it. Okay. Then my calculation was wrong. But bishop c5 was a weird move. B2 is an inaccuracy. Okay, bishop b5. Ah, bishop b5 to just like change that knight and make this pawn structure horrible and then come with my knight to d4. Maybe. Maybe. But that felt all reasonable for me. Castles. Yeah, here I should have been faster because my king is not in danger, at least for the time being, and it's essential. As you have seen later on in the game, it was essential for me to place my bishop on b2 as fast as possible. And I never had a chance to do it, and that was my problem. Rook d1. Yeah, the right move is rook to b1 and play b4. Yeah. I mean, you, you never think that a move like rook to d1 can be an inaccuracy. Very unexpected. Yeah, and then I missed this idea of knight c3. Of course, here I should have just exchanged the queens. That was my initial idea, but then somehow I I went for queen b2, which yeah felt a little bit like a weird move, but I didn't see the reason, and knight c3 is the reason. Okay, and now finally d4 is played, and I'm in trouble. So here I can still play rook d2, but I didn't want to make such a move. And here I said I can just play bishop d2 immediately, or b4, as the ancient suggests. But just just don't do that. If bishop d2 possible. Yeah. It's it's knight d8, the top computer choice, but from a human being it's very difficult to make such a move. And then I still play bishop f uh, bishop c3 and d4 is not a move. Yeah, so it was all possible. But rook c2 is just too slow. Once again, don't make too many moves with the same piece. Just one move, one piece. That is the golden rule. Okay, knight d5. This position is already completely lost for me. Why is it so bad? Yeah, here is the last chance if I just play knight d1. Yeah, probably. Probably. I just never want to play that passively, but sometimes you shoot if you don't have any other option. Then that guy is coming. 
yeah, even though it felt for me like I could have some chances because I have some compensation, but it's minus five according to the engine and the end game. End game is pretty set. Yeah, I can do anything here. Okay. Well, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I hope this game was instructive. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. And in this video, you're going to see another game that I won that time. And that would be a step-by-step -step guide for you how to beat a 1600 rated player. Very instructive game. Definitely take a look at it.